Hi everyone! This tutorial explains how to use plugins on Scratch version 8. Scratch comes with a number of its own effects plugins, but also supports the OpenFX plugin interface. This means that you can use any plugin set that also supports OpenFX with Scratch. Best known are these. RevisionFX, Denoise, Real Smart Motion Blur and Twixter, Digital Anarchy Beauty Box and Flickr Free, Sapphire and Monsters GT from Genarts, the Photo Plugin from Tiffin DFX, Photron Primate, Continuum Complete and Red from Boris FX, Neat Video, Lightspace CMS and Film Convert Pro. In this tutorial we will first look at how to add a plugin to a particular shot and second how to add a plugin to an output node or a complete timeline so to speak. Ok, let's enter into the matrix. Here we have a shot that already has a grading layer on it. But first, I want to draw your attention to the insert button right here, which we need to open up the plugins browser in order to add a plugin. As you can see, it's grayed out at the moment. To make it available, we need to either select the shot or the texture menu. Now actually, it does make a difference whether we've selected the shot or texture menu prior to clicking the insert button. Let's first select the texture menu and insert a plugin. As you can see, additionally to the already existing grading layer, Scratch created another layer containing the plugin. To manipulate the plugin, we need to select the shot menu. Normally, here are the source shot controls, such as the buyering or decoding settings, which we can bring up by selecting the primaries layer. If we have a layer selected, however, this page normally would be empty, simply because a grading layer as such doesn't have any debuyering or decoding settings. But if the layer contains a plugin, we will find the controls of the plugin in this menu. This way of adding a plugin to our shot is especially helpful on shots that need additional compositing with lens flares and the likes. We always have access to the controls and can also move the plugin layer around or disable it if needed. If we swipe to the right and take a look at our source stack, we can see the plugin feeding directly into our source shot, onto this layer. A more detailed view can be brought up by clicking the structure button on the top menu bar, especially when opened in dual view. Now let's add another plugin. This time we first create the layer and then use insert to select the plugin. The structure view is updated and we have the controls available from the shot menu. This time we also have additional overlay controls available from the plugin in our view window. To watch this more closely, let's jump into single view mode for now. As you can see, this plugin has handles to set up the effect. These controls are only available when in the shot menu. When we jump to the color menu for example, the regular layer outline is available again. Next, let's have a look at an alternative way of applying a plugin. Therefore, let's get rid of the plugin layers and start over again. Let's go a different route to add a plugin by selecting the shot menu prior to inserting the plugin. Let's choose a different plugin now. Maybe Scratch's own Retimer plugin. OK. Now looking at our layer stack, we can clearly see Scratch has not added our plugin as a layer. Also, our already existing grading layer seems to be gone. If, however, we look at the source stack, we can see that Scratch actually replaced the original shot with the plugin and uses the original shot, with its fancy grading layer on it, as input for the new plugin node. By the way, you can easily identify a plugin node by looking at the lower left corner of a thumbnail. The little puzzle piece icon indicates that this is actually a plugin node. If we open the inputs menu, we can also see the original source shot being fed into the plugin. Here we can also set various options, such as whether we want the grading of the source shot to be fed into the plugin or not. Each of these methods of applying plugins, by replacing the source shot or by adding layers, has its purpose. 
there where, for example, a lens flare would be more suited to be applied on a layer, the Scratch Retimer plugin can best be used by replacing the shot. One last thing before we move on to applying plugins to an output node. If we create a layer and select it, so we do not have the primary layer selected, it actually does not matter whether we are parked on shot or texture. When we insert the plugin, it will get inserted on the selected layer either way. Okay, let's go to the output menu. Same as with an individual clip, we can enter the player with an output node and apply plugins to it in the same manner as we did earlier with the clip. The following example is meant for DITs who need to put a burn in onto their rendered dailies. So, instead of adding the burn in as a layer to our output, which we could easily do as well, let's add it through the shot menu. You will see the difference in the output menu in a second. Once loaded, we can fill in several metadata items to be displayed on the image. Let me quickly load a preset I saved earlier. Going back to the output menu, we can see that by loading the plugin through the shot menu, we have added another output node to our node graph. Same as with the individual clip before, Scratch added a node to the tree and uses the original shot, in this case our main output node, as input for the new plugin node. Now every output added behind, or downstream this node, will receive the burn-in as well. I can save this output template together with my burn-in preset and all output file masks. Ok, just to recap. In Scratch you can insert a plugin on either an output node or an individual shot inside the construct. If the primary layer is selected, you can load a plugin as a layer by selecting Texture, then Insert, or have it vice versa and pipe the current shot into the plugin by selecting Shot and then Insert the plugin. If you have selected one of the layers, it does not matter if you are parked on Shot or Texture menu. The plugin will get inserted on the selected layer either way. This concludes the Scratch plugin tutorial. Have a nice day!